All right, here's a quick introduction to digital dungeon tiles. So I've got it all loaded up here. Now, a few things in this interface we want to take a look at. The first one is on the top left. It's called tile size. So this will be what kind of size of tile you'd like to place. So right now it's set on 4-4. Four, four. And then we need to pick what kind of tile type. So we have a whole list of different textures as tile types. We can use this little single bar list or we can pop out the panel and take a look at them all at once. And then we just choose one that we want to use and there we go. So a 4-4 tile is literally only 4 miniature lengths by 4 miniature lengths. So it's a pretty small area. And you'll see I'm zooming out on the map here. This map area, let me get rid of that tile, this map area is designed for a 40 inch screen in table system. So when you have a 40 inch screen in the table, when this map is zoomed in all the way like that, and you're in play mode, of course we get nothing built yet, so you can't see anything, but it will be exactly one inch by one inch. And then you can start using your miniatures um, to play. So that's just the default that we're starting with. Now you can change the size of this map grid uh, when you first start digital dungeon tiles. Uh, and you can even create your own custom one. So there's support for um, different sized TVs from I think 17 inch all the way up to 100 inch. And then there's also support for print sizes uh, where you can export the map for print and it supports home printers, eight and a half by 11, which you'd have to print out a few to, to make a decent sized map, um, 11 by 17. And then of course it supports a company called Vistaprint, vistaprint.ca or .com. Um, and it has different poster sizes you can get printed for fairly cheap. So you can build the map in here, export it, it's exported in super high quality, and then you just get that file over to Vistaprint online and they will ship you out your dungeon map printed. Uh, we don't have any links to Vistaprint at all, it's just that's where we've used to print out dungeon maps in the past, and the cost was good and the quality was great. So, All right, so back to this bit of an intro here. So we get a 4-4 tile. Let's make that 8x8. Eight eight. We're just going to make a small little one-room dungeon. And for some reason, I love this little brown dungeon tile thing, kind of because it's got squares on it already. If we pick one that doesn't have squares on it already, you'll see it has little white lines on it. And that's so you know where the little tile spaces are. So if I was to place this down and go into play mode, those lines stay there so we know where one inch and one inch is. Now if we click this tile, we have the option to move it freely if I were to click on any of these directions, or we can hold down the control button and snap it from square to square. So we can edit what we've done. Now when it comes down to tiles, um, I wouldn't scale them or anything like that because it's really going to mess up the, the size of the squares. However, the buttons 1, 2, and 3 so one is to move things, two is to rotate things, and again, I wouldn't rotate tiles. It's usually for decorations, but it's up to you, your creation. And then three is scale, so you can grab this and just scale up and down. We'll do that a bit later when we look at decorations. So for now, I'm just selecting the tile, so I can hit the delete key and get rid of it. Because really, I want this one. So I'll place that tile down. Now, if we want, that's perfect for a, a dungeon room. I mean, we can just add a little, let's see, a little four by four, add a little entryway. No, let's make it three by three, just so it's tiny. We'll put it down here. All right. So if we push play, we've got a dungeon. We don't have to worry about adding anything extra to make walls in, unless you want to. So in the doors and walls tab down here. Now these are map enhancements. So these are what make the maps look cool. I mean, you could easily play on this just fine, but we can make it look prettier. So the map enhancements, we have dungeons, which is pieces for a dungeon. There's like 1300 or something choices, just a ton. Now there's doors and walls. We could place doors and then these walls, you know, show you these. So you can move these around and by pushing the R button we can rotate them and just snap them into place. Just snap them in. So 
so this one goes over there we go well we don't want to completely close that up so let's do this a different way we can also go through these different walls and find different things where you do want to place them yeah, well let's leave that for now but you can also use the black tile from up here if you'd like to just place the different wall pieces and then a one one there we go there we are let's do this one too well, let's just do them all there we go so you don't have to do one at a time you can choose larger sections okay so the walls and tiles let's go ahead or doors and tiles let's go ahead and put a door in let's pick a door with some blood why not and then just kind of stick on so now we know where everybody's entering the dungeon of course you can make the entrance bigger or you can put a platform here for the miniatures to start on but it's completely up to you so also in the dungeon um sorry the doors and walls we've got some staircases so you can place those and make staircase going different places different sizes ladder and again we can rotate these things and put them in we've got all the different kind of easy dungeon walls and then we've got uh, trees for outdoors so if you want to have a pack of trees and stuff kind of just blocking that side of the map you can always use these instead of putting in a million trees just so it runs better um, we've also got pathways so fairly big pathways again for outdoor guess you can use them in a dungeon if you want to and those all snap together we come down into traps and we've got pit traps just kind of stick on there and give the illusion of a trap different sizes of course we got spikes and levers and a whole bunch of other things so we got a few things under traps nature tons of options here for rocks and trees and naturey things we've also got rivers uh, poison rivers for dungeons very cool very fun to use everybody loves poison rivers uh, lighting we've got different light sources you can add them in to change the lighting of the map if you want to make it look different we've also got objects here that throw light let's go ahead and put one of those in here let's put one here um, yeah, I'll just put one there and there's like candles and stuff in here so that's the lighting one and then visual effects now there's a bunch of different things in here and they're not for every occasion I mean if you want your map to be animated so if you're using this in a screen and table system these will make the map look interesting because it keeps things animated so let's check out these glowy things oh we don't need that that's no no let's see magic oh, that's definitely not what we want oh that's cool some kind of blue life force there you go life force coming out of the dungeon and there's a bunch of these butterflies there's fish there's a bunch of stuff water splashing all right so now our dungeon's starting to look a bit different now if we go into play mode if this was inside a television we just zoom in and we're at one one tiles and we're ready to play or we can decorate it some more so go into dungeon um, I love barrels so let's add some barrels I don't know why some barrels um, pottery let's find some pottery Ooh, treasure box of course we've got to add a treasure box hit R to spin it around put it into place I don't know which is the front so I guess we'll do that one uh, let's see here we go here's some pottery just put that in here so I'm moving the screen around using keyboard commands and those keyboard commands you just click this little eye down here in the system and it'll tell you all the commands you need so down here in system while we're on the topic we have exit to exit the program load to load a map save to save a map tokens and play so play uh, takes you out of this mode and hides all the interface and makes it ready to go so just click a button and you're out 
And then down this bottom corner, there's this little hard to see square with a e pencil in it, like edit. Give that a click and you're back in edit mode. So tokens, if you are playing uh, without miniatures, like say you don't have a TV and table system, you can always take these miniatures and use them for play. So we'll put a hero and we'll put we are a werewolf. That's pretty cool. Or a banshee. I don't want a banshee this time. So now if we were to go into play mode, we can actually move those tokens around based on what we're doing while we're playing. Now if you click a token and you move it and you can't remember where it started, you just right click and it goes right back where it came from. The great thing about these tokens is that we can turn on Fog of War in this top right hand setting. There's map settings. So map slash prints folder, that's going to open our maps and print folder so we can go in and, and use the files. We have clear map, which we don't want to do because that'll get rid of everything. However, there is a confirmation, so don't worry about clicking it by accident. There's fast graphics. Now when I click that, it really tones down the graphics. So the reason we've added that in is our TV or screen in table system is actually running on a computer that's all in one chip. So it's a very um, low end computer that actually just sticks to the back of the TV. And it doesn't have a great graphics card, doesn't have much RAM. It's, it's pretty old. I think we got it three years ago. Um, but we just turn on fast graphics and while we're loading everything, we load everything up or edit the map as we need and then turn it back off so that it's showing the real graphics and uh, and then we play like that. But, okay, back to what I was talking about. Uh, the Fog of War. So Fog of War, when we put it on, you're not going to see any difference here. However, when you go into play mode, there we go. So all player tokens will have a sight range in the Fog of War. And as they move, it kind of opens up the map for you. So now we know, oh, there's a there's a badge, but we have no clue what's after it. So you can play and never know what's coming up in the dungeon. Um, of course, if you've edited the dungeon, you know what's there, but uh, it's still fun for players to not know what's coming. And if we needed to, like say somebody just moved it around, oh no, I've uncovered the whole dungeon, uh, we can actually go back here and reset the Fog of War. Go back into play mode, and now it's reset, so it's only around the tokens and they can start exploring again. Now these tokens work well uh, for saving. We're not going to move it in here. So when we're playing the game, turn off Fog War, and say we don't finish a battle, and we want to keep track of where people were, where characters are, where enemies are, we can just place these tokens, even if we're not going to play with them. And then we have an exact location of the different monsters and players. We can also use these tokens during play on the tabletop uh, or screen and table because we can put the token underneath the miniature and then move the token so that we get to use the fog of war. And then we move the miniature on top of the token again. So in essence, we're playing with miniatures that we've that we have or that we've printed ourselves, um, and we still have the fog of war on and ready to be played with. So the token system is pretty cool. Uh, back up at the top in map settings here, we've got realistic water. Now, I haven't had a use for the water yet. Uh, we haven't done any water battles, but when you turn them on, let's turn off our fog of war so we can see everything. It actually puts water in the background. Ooh, our dungeon swimming. So that one's the realistic water. And if you don't want realistic water, you want like cartoon water. We've got that as well. So it all depends on your preferences. Uh, we also have weather. So our weather system, light wind, moderate wind, heavy wind, cloud, storm clouds, raining. Uh, let's just do like a mega storm just to show it. So now we've got all this rain and snow and clouds and everything happening on the map. <laughs> looks funny with water on. Let's turn off the water. There we go. So now we have this really, really stormy dungeon. Uh, it can be used for outside. <laughs> In dungeons, it kind of looks funny. But it just makes it more interactive if it's raining that day in the in, in the map they're playing. So let's turn that off. And then we also have uh, time of daylighting. So 
when you move it, it changes the kind of lighting that's available when you push play, go into play mode. Now for this, you can turn it all the way off and then only the lighting in the game will be used and you can light your map however you like. So let's go into lighting. Let's make this like an, an ice banshee. Just give a couple lights. There we go. Go back into play mode. And there we're fighting an ice banshee in some ice temple. Who knows? It's it's great. Uh, now we can go and delete these lights by selecting them. So you never have to worry about having lights or particles that are stuck there. And we'll just put the lights back in the center. And going the other way just goes to later at night instead of earlier in the morning. Now I don't use that too much. I like to just use the, the basic lighting. And that's pretty much it for using digital dungeon tiles. You can go ahead and build pretty much anything in here um, for outdoors based stuff. Let's just slide this over. Go this way. So it's the same thing. You find some nice outdoorsy stuff. We need a little bit more than 1-1. One, one. Let's go 8-8. Eight, eight. Here we go. And then if we want, we can add those walls of trees. All right. And it might look funny because the uh, trees aren't exactly square, but we play in a world of squares, so... And let's see, do we want, uh, doesn't quite fit with those trees, so we'd have to rework it, but let's put some nature stuff in there. All right, nature stuff, let's get some rocks, here we go, put a rock there, a little bush, let's find ourselves some trees, ooh, spider webs, dirt some dirt on the ground. There we go. Hmm. Some grass, Ooh, some bushes. Lots of mushrooms. Here we go. Here's some trees. Let's get a tree back here. And again, you can rotate all this one here. And I feel like it's missing something. You know, let's give it a Christmassy tree or evergreen right there. So now we've got this small little map we can walk in from here and go and find whatever we're here for. Maybe a fight, or even better, maybe there's some money laying around. Um, do I want money laying around behind the rock? Let's do that. All right, they're going to come for some money. And, and a box of fish. <laughs> I don't know why they want a box of fish, but in, here they do. Uh, so there we go. We can build indoor, you can build outdoor. Um, if you look through these here, you can see there are many options. Wood, you could build a boat if you wanted to. Uh, lots of tiles. We even have some roofing if you want to do rooftop battles. A um, bunch of weird things, some gross spidery stuff. Um, lava, bones and blood. It's always fun to fight in bones and blood. Sand, deserts. Uh, some metal here. Uh, prismatic stuff, I have no clue. But I mean, you know what? People come up with amazing maps all the time. So I have n no clue what to be used for yet, but I'm sure once everybody starts using it, it'll be absolutely amazing. Some snow, some lava. Uh, yeah, and uh, we're planning on adding more tile types um, and enhancements and stuff we're just just starting so uh, it's a great time to, to start playing with it it's very quick to use and uh, i hope you enjoyed this short little tutorial